Hello, and welcome to Blood of the Void, a live play TTRPG of the Klingon Star Trek Adventure System. I'm Elisa Pearl, your Game Master, and before we begin tonight's story, we have a bunch of announcements, and I'm just going to go right into them. So first of all, tonight we're raising funds for the SEED Project, that's S-E-A-D, and uh, it's a group of literary and visual storytellers that provide streamlined workshops and tools to engage and share knowledge in the Khmer, Hmong, Lao, and Viet diaspora communities. So super excited to support this organization. They're doing amazing work in Minneapolis and the surrounding area. And we've set our fundraising goal of $500. I think we're already at 20. So that's, that's great. Keep it going, keep donating. And we'll be giving out prizes to some lucky winners in the chat as we reach certain goals. So those goals are $100 will give out, will trigger a giveaway of two Klingon core book PDFs from Modiphius. So once that time comes, the mods will tell you, they'll give you a, something cool to say, to put a hashtag in the chat and they'll, they'll take you through that giveaway. Uh, once we hit $250, we'll give out three more PDFs. And then at $500, we'll give out the last four PDFs. All right. So a um, couple more announcements. Clear Skies, our sister show right here on Q Times, is back next week with a special Mirror Universe episode. So definitely check that out. Streampunks have a lot of fun in the Mirror Universe. I can personally attest to that. So definitely come back at this time slot next week to see that. And then uh, if you want to check out some more Streampunk's TTRPG goodness, check out our Patreon and consider supporting us so that we can bring you more of this TTRPG stuff we do. Our Patreon is patreon.com stream slash Streampunk's. And plus, honestly, there's a lot of other great TTRPG stuff happening right here at Q Times. So make sure you follow and subscribe while you're here. And follow at BloodFoidRPG on Twitter and Instagram to uh, see you know, what we're up to and what we're doing between our monthly shows. All right, and I have one more special shout out to some lovely folks that I just met recently uh, who run the, the podcast Trek Table. Trek Table is a weekly podcast holding Trek space for black, indigenous, brown, women of color, queer or otherwise, and their allies. So if you're looking for a Star Trek podcast that is super like warm and yummy and welcoming, where people can disagree and still love each other, <laughs> then check out Trek Table. It's a really beautiful place. Visit them at trektablepodcast.com. All right, now I'm gonna turn it over to my cast. Does anyone have anything they'd like to shout out or announce? Yes, I see two hands. Aki? Uh, make sure to catch me on the second of the two-parter I've been doing with the uh, Good Time Society over um, on their Twitch at 7 p.m. on Wednesday. Uh, we're playing part two of the Calyx, uh, and I'm really excited. It's been a lot of fun playing Call of Cthulhu. Wonderful. Quincy, what you got? Uh, real quick, I have a new episode of Asian Americana out. It just came out last week, so at least a couple of y'all listened to it, and I would love for more of y'all to listen to it. You can find it at AsianAmericana.com or your favorite podcast app. Highly recommend. Fantastic podcast. Go check it out. It's awesome. And with that, I think we're ready to start our next episode of Blood of the Void.
We land at the spaceport on Konos, outside the first city, and get our first whiff of sweet planetary dusty air. After indulging in some delicious fresh slugs, we take off for the House of Quebec. After Carole of House Quebec accepts our fealty, we have a few hours to roam the grounds until our huge welcome feast that evening. I first head into the house's record hall, where I meet Oran, the Gintak, or advisor of House Quebec. He shared that our exploits have made Quebec a rising house, attracting the envy of new rival houses who covet our position. I shared that I was the last of my house of Dash, that the rest of my family was killed, a betrayal by a rival house whose identity I have yet to gather. Dewa explores the house and finds the living quarters. As they are looking out the window, their eyes fall on their reflection, and for a moment, they see in the window the ridges of a disgraced Klingon house. They take a moment to reassure themselves before turning to explore the grounds. Omic gets a call from his mother and is grilled on whether or not he's currently in the pursuit of any fine Klingon women. After being thoroughly embarrassed by his mother, he decides to take his frustrations out on a slab of rock. After being informed that we would join House Quebec, I, being excited, and, you know, went with the decision to call home and tell my parents. Um, I was greeted by my mother and uh, grandmother telling me that they had found a mate for me. Uh, I was supposed to meet her when I go home. Yay. Blood wine is poured as they all sit down to a giant roasted targ and a gach buffet. As they all feast, they begin to tell tales of their exploits. And I slit my dick tuck from ear to ear, creating a beautiful smile on his throat. Edosians, plus my bet laugh, equals dead Edosians. I don't even care how to say that. And on their own ship, those Nausicaan cowards surrender to the Borku and their I crew. was able to claim my trophy from an unsuspecting security officer. What was this mysterious vine reaching out for me, saving my life? By sharing their tales of glory, the crew establishes their reputation among the house and other Klingons. After the feast, the crew takes part in the Rustai ceremony honoring the first mother of Klingons, Lorel, and officially becoming members of the House of Kevik. Tune in next time as the crew of the Borku continues on their visit to Konosh at twitch.tv slash qtimes. The crew takes part in the Rustai ceremony, honoring the first mother of Klingons, Lorel, and officially becoming mothers. <laughs> Yay, we did it, mothers. It's been a busy couple of weeks since we last caught up with the crew of the Borku. There's been a lot going on in the House of Quebec, lots of meals and talking and meeting of house elders and friends of the family. Lots of Ferengi traders have come and gone as you see the world that Carol, the head of your new house, the world that she kind of populates the characters. It's a mixture of Klingon warriors and farmers from her family's past, um, friends of her and Bamir, childhood friends who come and go. And of course the Ferengi traders and friends that she's made throughout her time as a trader with a D, not a A, A I T O R. <laughs> so you've, you've been pretty cooped up in the house of Quebec for the past couple of weeks, doing lots of dutiful things as new house members, letting the Rustai sink in and the Quebecness find its way into your, your blood and your bones. And so now you find yourselves with some free time and you're back home on Konosh, just outside the first city, about 15, 20 minute train ride outside the first city that so many of you have history in. Jade, 
I'd like to drop in on Idaj and see what is she up to? Oh boy. Uh, Idaj has been staying outside the city, not venturing in and with her first day of freedom. She knows she has to go visit her parents who are still alive and actually are quite famous. Uh, but before she goes there, she's going to drop in on an old acquaintance uh, mm -hmm. named Nivak. Mm -hmm. And he's someone that Adaj used to know about 15, 20 years ago, who was her first love. And uh, they haven't talked since then because Adaj had to go into something secretive and she's just going to go creep on him like a creeper. That's what she, she's not going to even, she just wants to go perch on some like rooftop outside his residence. That's, that's what she's going to do. Okay. So as far as you know, his last known residence was in the first city near, mm -hmm. near the old quarter. So kind mm -hmm. of the downtown area. Yeah. And so you make your way there, I'm guessing. Yes. Uh, the last known place he was. <sighs> and he... My parents both work in Klingon opera. And he used to work as a traveling playwright. And he wrote plays for them. Beautiful romantic plays. And I know that sometimes he'd go onto his balcony and look up in the sky and scream. So I'm just, I'm not gonna, I'm just gonna go on a building across and just kind of like sit on the roof for a while and just kind of stare through his window and maybe hope to catch a glance. You take the train, the short train ride over to his place and you're having all these memories and thoughts about him on the balcony and the time you all spent together and his plays and Maybe you got to read some of his plays sometimes. And you step off of the train into the station near his home as you last knew it. You find your way to his corner and you see just a very bustling, busy corner. It's, it's probably like midday at this point bustling people going to and fro there's a couple of lunch carts things like that and so there's he's a, his apartment building is on a corner across the street you do see another building that is a commercial building that has lots of different shops and levels and the other two corners are also kind of a mix of commercial and residential uh i'm gonna try and climb my way up the side of the building and get a higher perch okay so i can just creep on him oh god cool let's you know what let's roll to see how well you climb the building oh, like a, okay. a four-story building let's say yep okay uh i also have gymnastic agility as a focus uh, you're acting like you didn't you're like oh wait a minute I'm really good at this. <laughs> you know, that whole thing. Oh, uh, what are my what are my things? Oh Does yes. Um let's say wait, let me get my sheet up. Definitely fitness. Um <laughs> I mean, hmm. Well, do we make this a stealth roll? Is the question. <laughs> you know what? I'm gonna make this a stealth roll. <laughs> okay. Fitness and security, you're welcome to use that gymnastic focus. And of course, don't have any momentum yet, but yeah. Oh, I got I got a, a 20 and a 14. Ooh. So <laughs> that's uh, what was your target number? Oh shoot. So you're thinking of fitness, plus, <laughs> fitness plus security. Yeah, sorry. Not it's the 11. Number. That's eleven. So okay. I, I fail. Oh, well, you know what? Since I made this a stealth roll, you're able to climb up 
but you are noticed and you actually no. have that complication. I'm going to buy myself some threat with that complication instead of enacting it just this moment. <laughs> oh. um, but you are noticed. Uh, you get up to the third level. So just a level below his apartment and maybe like an apartment diagonally down from his. And you hear a voice Intruder! Intruder! Get my bat less! What? No. Get my bat less! No, ma'am, ma I'm, so, I'm, so, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not intruding. I was just fixing something on the roof. Uh, you see, I have all of these tools on me to fix. rips open and you see this old Klingon woman in a house dress and beads and long Klingon hair with her bat left with one arm. What are you doing? I just, huh? I just, huh? oh, okay, I, oh God. I was just trying to see if there was a, this guy across the way from you and I tried to get up sneakily and I was not quiet because I was kind of crying a little bit on my way up. I, I want you to do uh, another roll to see uh, if you can convince her not to take a swipe at you right now. <laughs> yeah, okay, all right. <laughs> what am I rolling for? Um, I think presence command. Okay, okay, this is good. This is good, I can do this. <laughs> okay, that's one success. And that's two successes. All right, okay. Right. Uh, the, sorry, the difficulty was two, so there you go. <laughs> she was about Back to- Back on track. Back. Yep. So she sees you crying a little bit and pauses, still holding her bat left with one hand, strong lady in front of her face. Are you, uh, are you all right? Oh. Yeah, no, I'm fine. I'm, I'm not usually like this, okay? I'm not. I just, I've been off planet for a while and coming back to Konosh has a lot of, feelings pent up inside of me i feel i'm looking at you and i feel like you can understand what it is to live a life of passion Ugh. and be denied the opportunity to extract it when you get the chance well sure she lowers her bat left cautiously well sure i know all about passion <laughs> but uh you know you're still intruding on my property yeah, yeah, I know. But could I ask you, do you know anything about that balcony over there? She looks over to where you're pointing. Uh, you mean the people who live there? Yeah, yeah, do you know who lives there? Is it, is it a family? Is it a single gentleman? Is it who lives there? How now? do I know you're not with Klingon intelligence? <laughs> that left right at you. I used to be, I no longer am. So this is a personal oh. call? This is a personal call, yes. All right. Yeah, I know who lives there. He's not home right now. He usually takes his daughter down the street for lunch. Are you? No. No, you couldn't be. Never mind. Anything else? No. No, that's it. Uh, thank you. Well, what are you know. what are you going to do? Are you gonna uh do wait for him to arrive? You gonna sneak up <laughs> no. to his balcony? No, 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 no. I've, I've, I've actually got a dinner date with my parents, so I have to go meet them now. Uh, but thank you, thank you for telling me. And I grasp her hand, and I hold it really, really tight, and I hold it up to my my chest. And I say, "Thank you for letting me know." And I let go, and I kind of like. 
try and go back down the way I came. Well, poorly, I don't know. Agitated <laughs> at this point. <laughs> As you start to make your way down uh, the side of this building, I'm spending two threat. No, oh, no. <laughs> and then going to go ahead and enact that complication. You slip. You slip mm -hmm. and you fall about a story. I'm clinging on. It's fine. Yeah. It's not too, too far of a fall, but it catches you off guard. Mm -hmm. And as you're, you fall, you shocked, collecting yourself across the street. Someone has, uh, you've caught someone's attention and you see someone you recognize. It is Nivek, but you see him about to walk across the street into his apartment building. And he has a, what looks like maybe like a 10 or 11 year old girl with him. And he looks over at you. And you two lock eyes, kind of, he's unsure what to do. And he looks down at his daughter. Um, Adaj, that's you, right? Uh, I, I, uh, no, no, it's not. It's you. And I saw you on the building, by the way. I saw you fall, sneaking around, instead of just coming and saying hi to me after all these years. Okay. I'm gonna stand up and dust myself off as best as I can. And as saunter, saunter over and just <laughs> hi what it, what hi, is this hi Nivek. you just show up you just show up where i live and you don't call me or contact me beforehand and then you sneak around what is this adash i think you were in klingon intelligence for too long <laughs> maybe maybe i wasn't it too long. I look now's now's not a good time. You hello. The little girl has been staring at you this whole time, uh, kind of transfixed. She looks up at you and says, Hi. I'm Anaya. She sticks out her her hand. I shake her hand and I go, whoa, quite a grip you got there, Anaya. Strong little lady you are. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty <sighs> strong, like my mom. It's 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 really nice to meet you, Anaya. It's nice to meet you too. And you can see I have to go. A little awkward. <laughs> uh, I have to go. Um, I have to meet my parents for dinner. I will. I will talk to you soon. Nivek looks at you. Where are you staying? At the right now. At the house of Quebec. Hmm. Well, if you actually want to catch up and talk and not sneak around, then <sighs> let me know. Old habits. And with that, I walk away um, and I don't look back. Okay. You 
walk down the street and away from this awkward situation. And we fade over to the Amyan. Where do we find you during your downtime? I am revisiting the academy. The last place I felt like I was truly on top of my game. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you haven't been to the academy in quite a while, but it has that feeling of when you visit your middle school or high school and you're like, was I tiny? Have I, am I a giant now? Because everything looks kind of smaller because you're, you're more grown now. The Academy has that feeling for you. And as you enter the front courtyard, look at the main entrance and see students going back and forth, uh, engaged in conversation and boisterous Klingon students talking to each other, just remembering being here and being a student. So there's the main, uh, you're going to see, who did you say you're going to see? Um, I want to see if Vish, my old politics instructor, is still teaching at the academy. Okay, so you go to the main building. There's a politics department in the main building. You end up in the offices that were the politics department still are. And you find yourself in front of a door that says Vish. Uh, I hammer on it with the side of my fist three times. You hear a slight sh ruffling of papers and then feet shuffling coming towards the door. The door opens. You see, do you want to describe Vish? Um, yeah, he is an older Klingon now. He was old even when I took a class from him uh, when before my second rite of ascension. Um, so now he's even older. He is like long, silvery hair um, that he still leaves just like out. So it almost like kind of it's frazzled out before the, the length of it like pulls it down. Um, and he has a very complicated like sp not spiral pattern but like like curved ridges going upward um and he wears like uh klingons have like stoles a lot for you know captains wear stoles and stuff like that he has like the academic stole he's probably like the the most decorated um professor instructor at the academy um and he's the one that i learned a lot of my formative lessons from so he opens the door looking just as as you remembered him, except more silver haired and older, maybe a little bit more stooped. Ra Amyan. I see the next generation of students has not killed you yet. <laughs> oh somehow I am still standing. Oh, what brings you to Kornosh? I, I actually have heard some things of your adventures on the Borku. Yes, a life on a military ship. It is not what I graduated to do, is it now? Uh, I would not have guessed you would have gone this direction. <laughs> uh, come in, come in. He turns and ushers you into his office. And the office is kind of like a shoebox shape, so rectangular and long ways going down towards a window, um, filled with books on one side and then some artwork, some paintings on the other long window, and then two leather armchairs. So he points to, for you to sit in one and sits in the one across from you. Someone where I speak to a superior and I do not have to stand at attention. <laughs> How does it feel to be back in the academic academia, your roots? It is bittersweet. This was the path I was meant to have been on until the family. 
Yes, yes. But I am back because I have found myself through this duty to this ship on the Borku has tied me to a new house. A house Ketvek. Have you heard of it? I have. The current head of the house, the matron Karol, is quite the house leader. She is ambitious for their house, and though I have spent the past several years serving in the Klingon Defense Force and for various ships, I feel it may be time for me to prepare for whatever this house may bring. And I feel that the house may bring other enemies beyond those from war with the other factions and cultures. No longer are there Jem Hadar coming from the front lines for me to shoot and stab down. And I want to make sure that I am prepared for whatever attacks there were that killed my family. I'm sure there are tenfold that look to take on House Kevek, and I want to make myself useful for them. Hmm. He uh, kind of leans back in his chair and takes in everything you just said, as if weighing what to say and what not to say. You have been away for some time, and I don't expect you to be up on the machinations of the High Council, but what you say of there not being much conflict with outer worlds, it's true. And some people are uneasy with that. Some people are gunning for a fight. It is the true Klingon way. If there are no enemies from without, they will find enemies from within. That is why I learned what you have taught, Fish. Yes. Words are powerful. And what it seems to be happening is that certain people's words have stoked fear and resentment and disappointment in certain other people's hearts. Of whom do you speak, Vish? Are there those that sow chaos and disorder in the Klingon Empire so openly? Yes. Although not as openly as they could, I will say. But they, that may be changing soon. I, I, forgive me, I actually was heading down to the Great Hall to sit, on, sit in on some discussions happening at the High Council. Would you like to join me? It would be an honor, Vish, to learn the ways of politics yet more. A refresher course, as it were. Yes, and it also would help to explain some of the things that I would like to tell you. Just, I could just show you what's happening and then you would understand more, more thoroughly. That would be wise. Let us go. Yes. Uh, he gets up in his old age, still, still a bit spry, but takes a moment to get up from this chair. Uh, and as you're walking out the door with him, he says, have you tried this new place? Uh, they, they have the most wonderful selection of gach. We should go there for lunch, maybe. It's uh, Kiritexian. Have you been to Kiritexian? Have I been to Kiritexian? Was that the place from before? Before? <laughs> Last time we were also at a, a gawkery. Or was oh, that, no. or, or, or did that just uh, that was at the house. cater the house? All right. Yeah. I have not, I have not had fresh gawk from the markets in a long time. Well, yeah, we'll... we wanted these mollusks when we arrived and I thought it would, it was better to head straight to our house for our duty. Oh, well, it's, it's time. We'll, we'll, we'll get some lunch at Kiritex in after, after the High Council. And uh, he kind of chatters with you as you, you both leave his office and close the door behind you. Now let's drop in on Omek and Dua. 
Where do we find you in your downtime? Uh, so I want to say that Dua has uh, actually been a little bit, I, I don't want to say withdrawn, but uh, perhaps more stoic than uh, usual while on Konosh. Uh, they don't seem to have anything particularly in mind to do, and they avoid uh, ranging too far from the house. Um, they're often kind of found lingering in like in the windows, kind of looking out towards uh, the outer edges of the city, uh, but they don't seem to be inclined right now to leave. Um, and I noticed this. And since I noticed this, because I myself was once like this, I still very much am. I am not really a people person. And so in order to get Dua out of her shell or out of their shell, I asked Dua to come on a hunt with me. But not only a hunt, but a uh, an exploration of the wonderful planet of Konosh. That sounds... Um... That sounds like it'd be quite stimulating. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You can keep records of all kinds of life forms that we encounter. I have a log of like over thousands of different types of life forms. It's it's pretty interesting once you record it all and then you can kind of refer back to it in case we uh, encounter it in space or anywhere else. It's it's quite fun. And then and then we also get to hunt, which is cool too. You know, killing a fresh targ. I'll teach you how to do it right. I have uh, done quite a fair bit of hunting for my own food in the past, but I am always keen to learn from someone with a, perhaps a wider array of experience. Oh yes, uh, patience is the key. So we'll just sit and wait, wait for a targ to, uh, to climb up on the bait. And uh, once we uh, kill it, then we can have my mother cook it for us. Your mother? Mm -hmm. Yes, my mother, Mara. Uh, she's a town butcher. She's amazing. She can uh, she can make fillet out of any piece of targ. I'll tell you that. Have you um, already spoken with your mother since returning? Yeah, yeah. She's uh, on my ass about getting married and having a connection with someone, but you know. The universe wants me to have one, and the universe will want me to have one. I'm not forcing the issue, you know? That certainly seems wise. Yeah. I I can't say that uh, our uh, old um, engineering chief was particularly on my case to uh, mate with anyone, but... Yeah, because then you got to raise them and take care of them and all that stuff and that kind of stuff sort of just, it's like a, it's like a, like a Klingon pet, you know what I mean? I don't know if I want to deal with that quite just yet. Not entirely sure I would equate a child with a pet, but um, I guess the point is well made. Have you ever babysitted a child Klingon? I have not spent much time around children in general. No. It's, it's like trying to discipline a uh, juvenile tart. Trust me. I'm guessing you have much experience with small humanoid creatures. I try to keep my distance, but I have encountered them. These small Klingon creature like kids. Perhaps this is a question that is a little too forward, but uh, do you have siblings at all? I, uh, I used to. I used to. My, my older brother, Athul. Oh. Did he die in battle? Again, I apologize if I'm being too forward. Huh. You can say that. He, uh, he was slain. He was slain by one of the, she was a prospect, per se. She was, 
she was a young prospect who had the ability to handle a battle F with great ease. And my brother was also very skilled at the battle F, uh, at the battle F, battle F. Oh, gosh, this blood wine is creeping up on me. Anyway, um, she's really skilled, and so was my my brother. And my brother, being older than she was, uh, got very cocky and felt that she was no match for him. And that became his demise. His, his ego caused him to uh, be slain by this young girl. And that caused a lot of shame on my house, on my father. My father uh, abandoned us. And he, uh, I don't know if he's alive to this day, but you know what? I wouldn't do that if I had a son, two sons, right? Indeed, families are complicated. Yes. Now about yourself, do you uh, have any siblings as well? None that I've met or know about to any um, particular degree, no. Oh, so you grew up an uh, only child? Yes. Hmm. How was that? I suppose it... It's okay, there's no judgment here. Well, it was confusing and lonely at times, though it is difficult to describe the experiences that I had. Why is that? I am, um, I was sent away from my home against my will to a place where I had no family and knew no one and had to make a way for myself. Almost in a culture that I did not quite understand. And I learned much in that time, but there are in many ways, Kwanosh does not feel like home. So you were sent to, you were sent away at a young age. Yes. Do you, I go ahead. Do you know? May I ask you? I mean, not I'm not trying to trying to overstep my boundaries, but do you know why you were sent away? I have. I have suspicions. Hmm. Which are? Um, I think perhaps um, I'm not quite ready to talk about that. But suffice it to say, you are not the only one whose family has been dishonored and disgraced. Well, in my eyes, I honor you. You're my crewmate and hopefully my friend. The same is true. Yes. Now, shall we go get some fresh targ? Please, great Omek, show me how a master hunter proceeds. Yeah, well, I wouldn't say great. Good, above average. Uh, I would say go ahead and grab some of this wonderful mud that you see on the ground and just go ahead and push all on the face. Everywhere. Every nook and crack. We are already pretty brown. <laughs> this makes you feel one with the earth. Trust me. Trust me. And it's great for the skin. Come on. I will have to take your word for it. And like, Dua is trying very hard to take this I guess seriously, but like, yeah. Do I? Uh, you missed the spot. Uh, <clears throat> oh, right there. Rub that in. Mm. Oh, All right. Okay. 
You're have not supposed to open bit. your mouth. You missed a, you missed a spot too. Ah. You have, a little of your own medicine here. Yes. <laughs> At least right? wait for me to close my mouth. God. Uh, I thought that the mud was good for you. There was all kinds of nutrients in that mud. <clears throat> this is true. This is true. This is true. It's good Klingon mud. Yes, this is true. This is true. We're going to do a quick zoom out and then zoom back in because we zoom out and we see that you, during this whole conversation, we've seen kind of like a montage of you traveling out to the country. Uh, from the House of Quebec, you passed through the first city on the train and then you transferred to the Mag Rail train, took that out to a place called the Ketha Lowlands. And that is a Ketha province, which is a uh, very like mixed, mixed ecological area where there's forest, there's some uh, hunting, beautiful hunting grounds, which Omek has been to before and is familiar with. And there's a city to the south of the hunting ground. So you pass through the city, take the train there, and then you have to take an all-terrain vehicle to the hunting grounds where you are now. And we zoom back in to you throwing mud on each other's faces. Okay, okay. All right. I think we are sufficiently covered in ooze. We are. It's... Yes, 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 yes. Nearby, so... nearby, Omek, you, uh, you have been to this place before. And so this part of the hunting grounds, there's definitely a lot of dirt and mud. It's almost, um, if you've ever been to, ooh, my brain is forgetting what it's called. Oh, Vasquez Rocks in Southern California, which is a famous place that, so is that what you were thinking, Quincy? I saw that look of recognition. It just, uh, oh, Vasquez Rocks showing up in a Star Trek story? Yeah, yeah. you, you were like, I knew it, I knew it. <laughs> uh, but imagine it's kind of like Vasquez Rocks where the it's pretty dry and dirty and dusty, but then there are some places that there's a little bit of moisture. There are some um, groves of trees, but mostly clearings here and there. There's outcroppings of rocks spread around. There's a lot of space, but then you can go into um, the forest groves if you uh, travel out in any direction, pretty much. Uh, and Omek, you would know this. There are some creatures and critters here that hide anywhere they can. So literally anywhere here can be used as camouflage for certain creatures that you're hunting. So what'll it be, my friend? Should we hunt some wonderful tog? Or should we make this a uh, non-challenging mission and just go hunt some gawk? Just have to dig some holes. You didn't bring me all the way out here just to dig some holes, Omek. Tog it is. Let's go. Okay. So where would you like to walk to? What, what direction? So I think I'm going to take her into- Take the them. I mean, I'm sorry. I think I'm going to take them into the forest and with our camouflage, uh, we are going to strategically place ourselves downwind from where most Targ go to uh, drink water at this watering hole. Uh, okay. So we're gonna place ourselves there. Uh, when we get there, of course, there's no Targ there, but like I said, it's all about the thrill of the, uh, the hunt. It's all about patience. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you find this spot that you know is a place that Targ would like. There's water. There's some trees and bushes for them to hide in if they need to. Um, you can probably also see in the, the this is now moisture, dirt, and mud here because of the trees and the water. You can see places where Targ have like rolled around in there and the impressions of their bodies rolling back and forth in the mud. Um, I would like you both to do um, this is kind of a perception roll. What do we usually roll for perception? I have it in my notes somewhere, but is it insight something? Insight command? Yeah. Or, or yeah. It might be. We could do yeah, we could do insight command. Or I would even say insight security. Insight since security. This is even worse. 
Um, Omek, how about you do insight security? Yes. Yeah, I would say insight security for you both because this is a hunt. Okay. You're specifically looking to. Uh -huh. Chances of success are very low. Oh, the difficulty is two. Cool. Doesn't matter because I fail epically. Oh, no. <laughs> I got one success. Okay. Dua, you two have been sitting here now for what feels like forever. <laughs> it's probably only been 10 minutes in silence in this forest and nothing is moving, nothing's happening until you, too late to do anything about it, you hear a, <laughs> a targ squeal about 20 feet away and a targ just jets out of bushes and runs away from you. Pretty sure that that's what we were supposed to. Yeah, you were supposed to jump, jump on it, like you know what I mean. Like we were waiting here such a long time. So, like when did it comes, you back, like, see it? I mean, I wasn't near it. I mean, if I was near it, then I would have jumped on it, like what you, sh what they should have done. But you know, hey, um, I didn't see it. I heard it suddenly, but they didn't see it. Their their mm -hmm. camouflage is, I mean, probably arguably better than ours is. Mm -hmm. We we just gotta wait again, I guess. You know. Um, yeah. Okay. Do you like meditating? I'm not particularly adept at the the task. No. Oh. I prefer to uh, I prefer to just do the thing. Do the thing. Yes, I'm not one for waiting if I don't have to. Well, that's the name of this game. Which is why I'm doing it because I have to. I hear you. You're being a good sport. They're being a good sport. So let's wait again. Shall we? Yes, let's. I'd like you both to do another insight command. Insight command or insight security? Oh, sorry. Insight security and difficulty two. Same thing. Seeing if you hear anything, sense anything nearby. Two successes from Dua and two successes from Omek. So this time you're sitting there for another 10 minutes and <laughs> just very faintly, maybe 10 feet behind you you hear what sounds like maybe multiple. There's at least two bodies kind of brushing up against each other, squealing. They yeah. seem to have no realization that there's hunters nearby. Uh -huh. Since Dewa has never done this before, I'm going to take it upon myself to uh, initiate first attack. Um, I got their eye contact so that they know what I'm about to do. You know, I'm like that there. See that there? Uh -huh. that me. On there. They they confirm several times <laughs> as Omek makes the wild eyes at them. <laughs> Try not to move around too much because I don't want to start with a target, you know? And, and they just grin viciously at Omek. And like draw their dick talk. Nice. So I have my dick talk drawn. And do I need to roll for this? Or I can just jump. Yeah, tell me what you'd like to do and then you'll roll for it. Oh, I'd like to just get the biggest, fattest targ that I see. It's a family, right? So I see a uh, uh, either a father or a mother targ. And uh, it's looking delicious and juicy. And so... I jump on that because I want some lechon, you know what I mean? Okay, are you trying to basically like tackle the targ? Oh yeah, oh yeah, okay. tackle the targ with the dick talk and then come across its neck and uh, pretty much just go ahead and cut it on open. I'm gonna have you roll uh, for the tackle first. So uh, that's gonna be fitness security. Fitness security. 
fitting in have targ inside targ. my tackle. Nope. Gotta have that crispy targ. <laughs> oh man. Oh, crispy pork is so good. All right, I'm done. I'm suddenly very hungry. Um ah, one success. Difficulty two, right? Difficulty two. One. Okay, you have your dick tech tuck at the ready in one hand, fo super focused, and just when you're about to lunge, they just they hear you and they start to scuttle away. Startling. Yeah, I'd like to see if I can't cut them off. All right, take a take a crack at them myself. Great. Uh, we, and how you'd like to like physically just get in front of them, or, or um, you... yeah, I think I, I want to try and cut off their escape. Like if I can wound one of them as they try to like get past me, I'd like to do that. Okay. We'll see how, how well you roll. Uh, difficulty to fitness security. Fitness security. Cool. Oh man. These are not great rolls for me, but we're going to see how I do. Ooh, only one success. We haven't gotten any momentum yet either. No. Got to do some easy rolls to get some momentum. <laughs> Uh, so no success? To, just one. Oh, one success. Um, so you, yes, you you happen to be able to get on the other side of them, but they they kind of like stop in their tracks and kind of skitter away into a, a different direction away from both you and Omic. Um, except one of them, now it's their turn. Uh, the biggest of them, you did say there was a papa and a mama and maybe like a teenage targ. The biggest one, the papa, hangs back and aims its tusks at you, Omic. And oh, you are in combat with the targ. Oh, in yeah. combat with the targ. A little help. A little help. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm on my yes. Again, more feral grinning. Just so much feral grinning. You see, like the mud caked face of Dewar, just like their teeth gleaming through the mud, wide eyes. There's no Papa smiling Tark. in hunting. There's no smiling in hunting. Papa oh, there's Tark, so much got annoying. two successes. <laughs> and the difficulty was, in fact, two. And so Papa Targ, with his tusks, does, oh wait, one, three points of damage. Piercing you in the thigh, Omek. And it's um, probably not super deep, uh, but it, it's more than just a, a, a pinprick. Probably a couple inches deep. Draws blood. Can you, uh, you mind? I mean, I'm going to try and get this Tark first. Yeah, you're still in combat, so. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> uh, we haven't really, uh, let's say that Omek it goes Omek, Dua, and then the Targ. Okay. So Omek, you're up. What okay, you like so, to do? Um, I mean, I, I, I got to get this Targ back because uh, now, now it's personal. And I'm looking really bad in front of Dua right now. <laughs> I'm brilliant. looking so bad. <laughs> um, I would like to, because uh, it came at me, it attacked me, it stabbed me in the leg. Um, if it's still in the area, I, I would like to try to attack it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's still right. It it's still right in front of you. Um, yeah. Uh, so I'm guessing with your TikTok or. Well, on at this point, I think we're I'm on the ground. It's pretty much at eye level with me, um, and it's probably going to make another charge at me. And this mm -hmm. I know because that's typical behavior of a targ. And so I have my TikTok ready right under my face like right under my chin just kind of like my face is like the bait and then so the the tar can try, try to just attack my face and then hopefully it'll run straight into my dick tock but you know we'll see okay this is a pretty good strategy um uh, remember you have hunting as a focus don't you oh yeah that's right <laughs> yeah okay and also you don't have momentum but you can buy momentum by uh giving me threat if you do want to Get some more dice. I don't think he's targeting even more dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't think I'm going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> All 
I just wanted a meal. That's all I wanted. Uh, all right. We're going to get our meal. <laughs> with security difficulty too. Believe in you. We oh, can't yeah. hear you. Fit, fitness security, right? Yes. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, let's go. Let's go. Oh, sheesh. So a 20, that's a critical, right? Like if you get a 20. That's a bad. That's, that's a bad like, critical. That's I mean, that's critically bad. Right? bad. That's yeah. a complication. I mean, yeah. I don't have to. I got a 20 anyone, other too. I don't have to let anyone know that I got it, right? Yes, you do. <laughs> you know, we've been playing together for like nine months. <laughs> and you're going to just now start like, oh, I don't have to tell them. <laughs> I, how can we trust you now? Like, no. <laughs> I, I, I think I'm seeing a reason why we never came back to Konosh in all this time. <laughs> right. Get back on the ship. Get back not on the good. ship. Not good. It's not good. <laughs> well, historically, shore leave is not great for Star Trek games. It's true. Historically. It's true. For stream punks. Yeah. It's, uh, like, almost, it's, a, it's like a foreboding phrase. <laughs> Nausicaan's easy. Hirogen, easy. Klingon is easy. Target stairs. Oh. <laughs> so Omic, you you have this plan that has worked in the past. You've done this before, and you know Targ behavior, but for some reason this Targ does not go for it, and just tramples over you, missing the knife. And let's see, actually. Um, Mm -hmm. It's my turn. I feel like there's some type of role that happens here. Ooh, I'm forgetting my combat rules, y'all. Help me out. Anyone remember? Does what are you, what are you asking for? Does the tar roll? No. Well, he failed the roll. All all um all melee combat is supposed to be daring security opposed rolls, and whoever wins wins. Oh, it's opposed. That's why. Okay, so then I will do uh we'll do it from that way from now on. So I will just like uh fill in by having the targ roll as if it was opposed and see what happens. Security and opposed rolls oh. for combat. Cool. Well, the targ actually only got one success. So the targ, um, uh, but the targ still wins because you got, you, you didn't get any successes, right? And you got a failure. You did get one success, but you got a I got, complication. I got one, but I got a, I got a three. Okay. So it's a tie with complications. So I'm going to say that the Targ barrels towards you, does not take the path you think it will towards your face. It actually barrels across your body and lands its its uh, paw. No, bolt. Hoof. 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 Thank you. I was like, what is that word? It lands its hoof into your thigh, which, as you can imagine, freaking hurts. And this is the one that's bloody, too? Yeah, the, the one side. that got it's you. It has It got you. Yeah. Oh, oh, the thigh that's bloody. No, actually, it's a, it's um, but it's higher. It's higher up in, in the same thigh. Yeah. Oh gosh. Wait, Phil, did you say you got a three? You rolled a three. Yeah. Was that Isn't a critical that success for you? What's your security rating? Oh my, it's a uh, four. More than three. Yeah. Well, yeah. oh, then yeah, that was a critical success. Three. You got two. Two. So, so you have two successes with, with complication. the complication. So you actually won oh. that then. Okay. My so, bad. I'm sorry, guys. No, it's okay. You, you know could. what? We'll just, thank you for checking that. So we're going to rewind and redo that moment. The targ does the same thing, goes, but it does follow your path and gets got get, gets gotten by your knife. Uh, I'm going to have you roll damage for the targ. It still does get your thigh, which is the complication. Okay. So go ahead and roll damage for your dick talk. And my dick talk is five, right? Is it five? No. It should be one plus security damage. So you'll roll uh, one d six plus however many, which you said was four. Five d six. Oh, five. So, yeah, five d sixes. Okay. Rules, y'all. Rules. That's right. And five and six are. Um, Crits, right? Or no? Wait. Effects. Five and six, five and six are effects. Effects, my bad. Yes. And they one and two. Three and yeah. fours don't count. Right. Three and fours are empty. One is one. Two is two. Five and six are one with effects. So I got, out of the six, I got two effects. I got a five and a six. And the rest are three and fours. 
Okay. So I have two. two. Two damage, two effects. Two damage and two effects. Targi. Okay, so the Targ is not down for the count by any means, um, but you uh, definitely have now drawn blood on the Targ in return for its drawing blood on you. And I'll say that the effect was the location of where you drew blood, and now it's making the Targ kind of hobble a little bit because you got it in the shoulder, the front shoulder. So it has cleared your body and now it's turning back around and Dua, it is now your turn. Yep, during security, correct? Yes. So that I can try and get a, a stab in and supposed roll. Yeah. Here we go. Hacha. Hacha. Oh man. Uh oh. No, I got a success, but it was so close to being a crit. Targi got two successes. Mm. Boo. Um, what would have been your Move. Probably try to like get up behind it because it's like on top of Omek right now to like kind of try and catch it between the shoulder blades. Mm. So as you're you're trying to sneak up on it, it ha it now like crosses to the other side of Omek's body, turns around, and then goes for your thigh. And the pose checks, yeah. What's that? I'm I'm rolling an opposed roll, correct, against it. My, oh, my I was going to roll damage because the target. The opposed roll is already the who wins. Oh, okay. Never mind. Yeah, the targ the targ won that, so I'm just running uh, rolling damage, and the targ got one two with one effect. So you take two points of damage. Ow! And well, thank that, you. That tusk is like thigh high, so you got a, a poke in the thigh too. Targ is really good at that. That's like the targ's one move. Yeah. No. Dua just growls at the, the Targ, but they still have the grin. This is fun. <laughs> uh, Omek, you're up. Man, this damn Targ. I am not looking good. Um, so now I think I, I roll, right? I roll before I yeah. do anything? Okay. You're going to cool. roll against the Targ. Right. You got this. You got this. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> I'm not rolling that great anymore. <laughs> okay. Okay. I got, one success. Right. I got a three and a 12. So three is a critical yeah. success three. and a yeah. 12. Nice. You got three total successes. Okay. Uh, you got the got. So roll your damage, but also tell us what happens. Okay. Five, six. Ooh. And a four. Okay. Wait. And then, and then a five. Okay, I got three fives, one six, and one two. So the the two bounces out, three, right? Four, five, six, six. Counting six think. damage. Yeah, six damage with th four effects. Yeah, yeah, because all those fives and sixes. Yeah. We eating tonight, baby. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, so that did take a wallop out of the target. And what what is what was your move here? What did you do? Well, this targ, man, I gotta tell you, it was a challenging targ. So uh, as it attacked Dua, it came back to me trying to get a little bit more of that other right thigh, you know, because it smelled that blood, and I knew it. I knew it was coming for that thigh. And what I did was I rolled on my back onto my feet. The tusk tried to try the 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 torque tried to try to thrust his tusk into my thigh, but it didn't because I was quick with it. And what I did was I actually grabbed it from the mane, from like its little little whisk, little hairs on the top of its head. You know what I'm saying? And I picked it up with my left hand, and the other hand I had my dick tock, and I sliced his throat quickly, nice and fast and efficiently. And it just bled out. Well, it's not dead yet. It, it's oh. not dead yet. But you did. <laughs> Let's say that your slice wasn't quite deep enough to 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 kill it. But you got you got You're pretty good bleed out process. Yeah, it's it's bleeding profusely for sure. Okay. Um, all right, Dua. All right, I will attempt again to do a stab. 
I'm sorry to all vegans. I, I'm not vegan, but I just feel bad sometimes. <laughs> like, Hey, we plan to use every single ounce of this animal. Not I'm, a bit of it will go to waste. I don't feel bad for the preachy vegans. I feel bad for the just like people who care about animals. That's what I'm, I'm saying. We should. De- I, yeah. I, I'm not against eating animals, but... You should also treat vegan. animals with respect, know where they came from. If you're going to eat an animal, you know. Yeah. And they're hunting. Y'all are hunting it with your own hands. Like that's. Yes. We have yeah. to also, you know, take care that we, we, we acknowledge the fact that like indigenous species hunting mm-hmm. is. Yeah. It's anyway. painful. It's yeah. Yep. It's kind of, yeah. Tar jerky for everyone. Tar jerky for everyone. All right. Next? You ready? Yes. Oh yeah, sorry. Let's roll. <laughs> I'm ready. Oh no! Oh, interesting. Okay. Zwo oh, successes, except yeah, Zwo successes. But we, wait. it's fine. We haven't been stacking up the momentum on on opposed checks here, which we probably should have been doing. Maybe but... the tar will roll two complications, and you'll still win. <laughs> I think I you know. have maybe two momentum. Yeah, it's too late. I've already rolled. So well, I mean, for the wait. next time, just yeah, for the take... next time. Yeah, I just really like do need to bank two momentum. I my... think... I mean, actually, maybe just one because Philip had three successes at one time. So just one momentum. Um, Targi got two successes. Ooh, <laughs> ouch. It's going to hurt. Just barely, right on the target now. number. Um, yeah, so let's roll that damage. Targi don't play. Yeah, I'm going to. So that's two, two damage. Yeah, cool. Uh, they kind of give out like another like like grunt of pain, uh, but uh, at this point they see see themselves as a, a, a meaningful distraction so that like the hunter can get the kill. Mm-hmm. And by the way, the targ because it won that round. Uh, let's say it slips out of the grasp of Omek and has lunged for Dewa. Gets Dewa this time. Dewa, uh, so the targ is using a different move, which is basically like an angular up with the tusks and gets you behind uh, the back of your thigh. Yep. Tusk up the butt. Cool. Tusk let's go. <laughs> Omek, what's your what's Bro, your plan? It- if this tuck, if this like targ defeats us, can it just like get my position as science officer? <laughs> and, uh, just go ahead. If it wants Promote. it, I guess. Promote. I will accept that. I will accept that. <laughs> Beck Pumba over here. <laughs> All right, I'll make let's roll. Okay. Ooh. Not good. Not good for Targi. <laughs> I got a two and a ten, though. Good for her. So you got three. Bank one two momentum. Right. And Targi got a 16 and a 20. So two failures and a complication. Um, I'll let you decide, uh, Omek, what, what's the complication? Actually, why don't you roll your damage first, and then we d- we see what, what the results are. We you know what the complication is. It's bleeding <laughs> out. That's what the well, complication is. You might be able to roll enough damage to, to do that now. So. Five, six, one, two, uh, one. I got two, two effects, five and six, two, two, five and six. No, two. one, five, one, six, only two effects. I'm sorry. Two damage with the yes. two effects. Oh, okay. That target is still, still hanging in there, but very rough, very rough, bleeding a lot, kind of looking kind of woozy, actually. I have a suggestion for the complication. Yes, go for it. That the targ is now incapacitated, has uh, been injured enough to not be able to move very much anymore. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. lost blood. Yeah, so let's say the targ has been woozy and wobbling around and then just kind of falls over, still breathing, but like just really out of it. Yeah. Not getting up time, time to send its spirit to the, the next realm. I'll let you do the honors. The what? <laughs> Hopefully I can actually manage it. Has the difficulty gone down? And am I any chance now that it's incapacitated? I'm just asking for, for um, me. Yeah, let's say the difficulty is one. I'm not even sure. If someone's incapacitated, they can't roll anyway, right? I have no idea. I have never actually had to do a combat where I fight. So 
<laughs> this yeah. is my first combat oh. actually in, oh, in Star Trek Adventures because uh, Ambassador don't fight. That's not how that works. <laughs> <laughs> Ambassador runs and hides. Ambassador don't fight. All right. Yeah. So if a character is incapacitated, uh, they cannot perform tasks or minor actions. So yeah. So the target can't even. I think you can probably just yeah, just go ahead and roll, and then maybe you'll bank momentum, and then roll your damage. Yeah, there are no successes in that at all. I can't even successfully stab something. So okay, I guess Omeg's gonna have to step in and finish off this targ. Yeah, we can't leave this poor targ just. No, we cannot. Please put it out of its misery. Yes, let's do that. Let's do that. Uh, do I do? Uh... Oh, here we go. Uh, oh gosh, fourteen and eighteen, guys. Why is this happening? Why? I rolled the That's exact same job. thing. I rolled Still the exact same job. thing. A fourteen and eighteen. I also rolled exactly that. We, we got to get off his planet, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine that Tark is laying on the floor, not moving, and y'all right, like tripping on blood and stuff. Like, whoa. Okay, okay. I did get a success finally <laughs> on a roll. All right, all right. So you got it. Is one plus my security. I get to roll two whole dice, y'all. <laughs> but I rolled a five. So that's okay. one. That's one with an effect. All right, great. And that finishes off the targ. How uh, how do you do it? So I think they missed the first time because the targ is like th like death throws thrashing about a bit. So they mm -hmm. kind of like kind of stab first into the mud and then like kind of Omek sees Omek struggle with the same thing and finally kind of like essentially just kind of gets on top of this thing and just like drives their blade into its chest. And then as they draw the blood from uh, the blade from the body, they like smear the, the knife like like across their face, <laughs> like flat so it doesn't cut them, but like, you know, mixes the blood in with all of the mud. Uh, that's on their face, and then turn up and look at uh, Omek again, again with like the feral grin, um, blood pouring from their leg. That was fun. Oh yeah, <laughs> that was your first kill, I take it. Uh, I haven't hunted in quite some time, and always smaller game. This is indeed the first targ I've ever helped to kill. I'm bleeding out of the leg, but you know what? I'm overwhelmed with so much pride and happiness that I am a part of this experience with you, so. We're bleeding from the legs together. This bastard of a tar took a, <laughs> took a heavy toll. Now we must uh, repay it by consuming its flesh oh, yes. quickly. And That's also good. patching up these wounds. Yes. Rub some dirt in it, it'll be fine. <laughs> Slap some mud on that. I don't know if uh, our commanding officer Dodge would advise you to rub some dirt in your wounds, but uh, yes, yes, yes. I think that's actually completely, um, completely not true. Dodge would be more than happy to know that we had used mud to uh, close our wounds. She's <laughs> she's a she's an interesting physician. Oh yes, she is. So we're gonna zoom back out from this forest as we see you. Uh, putting healing mud into your wounds and kind of gathering up the targ to take it back home. We are going to uh, pause the story now and check in on our fundraiser. Last I heard, which was a while ago now, it feels like forever, uh, we were already at 300 Like by the time we were starting the story. So checking in with Jacob or whoever wants to give me an update. <laughs> We're at six hundred dollars. We're at six hundred dollars. We okay. We blew past our goals. Y'all did amazing. You're amazing. Thank you so much. We raised. We have so far raised six hundred dollars for the seed projects. Um, now here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna give out some Klingon PDF core books. We're gonna raise that goal because why not keep going? And I have a bit of a stretch goal for you. First things first. Uh, my lovely dear mods, respect them, respect the mods. They're going to give you instructions right now of how to enter the giveaway. Now that all the things have been triggered, we're going to choose 
I mean, let's just give them all out now. Why, why hold them back? We have nine Klingon core book discount codes, not discount codes, download codes, absolutely free, gratis for you. Uh, if you win this, nine people will win this in the chat. So listen to the mods, see what they say, do what they say, respect the mods. Um, while you're doing that, our stretch goal, I'm very proud to announce, our stretch goal is $1,000. And the prize that we will trigger is our own very dear Eric Campbell sitting at our table and guesting with Blood of the Void. Okay, okay. I'm super excited. I'm super excited. Uh, I really want him to guess at our table. So let's try to hit that goal of $1,000. And uh, yeah, yeah. We're going to take a break now. It's 7.55. In our time zone, we'll be back in about 10 minutes. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. And that's how the Targ was won. We are back from break. Uh, I heard that all the winners have been selected. Thank you all so much for participating and for donating. And I am not prepared, but I have a, a link if you'd like a 10% discount to buy the Klingon core book. I will share that surreptitiously during this game with Jacob or whoever to pass along to the mods. Uh, totally on top of it. Yeah totally prepared. Um, so yeah, thank you so much. Uh, we're going to keep going to our stretch goal, having Eric Campbell guest at our table as a, well, I don't know, maybe a Klingon, maybe a Ferengi. We don't know. We'll see. Um, but in the meantime, we're going to get back to the story. So we're meeting back up with Adaj. Oh, Checking in. Where do we find Adaj now after that strange encounter with the ex-lover on the street? Oh, oh, that's the worst when you say it like that. Um, <laughs> Just drag the knife in there. Oh, I'm going to like take a break from the back for a little bit because I need to like put everything away. And I, I do have a dinner date with my parents, so I'm going to go meet up with them. Uh, my parents are Ayram and Esner, and they... Uh, I'm the not secret daughter, but I'm not the publicly known daughter because Ayram is a Klingon opera singer and Esner is her husband and also like a playwright. So he also like writes a lot of his songs and composers. Um, mm -hmm. But because they didn't want to subject me to like having a life, you know, in the in the spotlight, since I'm a little bit more private, they let me be like secret daughter. So I'm, as far as anyone knows, I'm just like a munchkin that was running around backstage a whole lot of the time during the shows. Oh, so, so I'm going to go meet up with my dad. To even the people at their opera? Yeah, they don't really super know. I think like they they see that I'm like there all the time and special, but not most people don't know. Oh, wow. But, okay. Interesting. Yeah. All right. Um, so you, you've made plans to meet up with your parents. Did you choose the restaurant or did you have them choose a place? Uh, we're just going to eat at our home. Oh, okay. And my mom's okay. going to cook for us because that's what she likes to do. Lovely. Yeah. Um, so do your parents live in the first city? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, they have like an artist's like loft that's somewhat near the um, opera house. So it's close by. It's a little bit small, but um, they like to be in the hustle and bustle of things. Lovely. Okay. So we're going to open up on this artist's loft that... Ayram and Eshner, is that right? Ayram and Esner. Esner, mm -hmm. okay. Ayram and Esner, their artist's abode in the first city. Um, they have been anticipating seeing their only, well, their only child who's also now commanding a, sh a ship, a Klingon Defense Force ship. So you can tell as you walk in, usually there's um, a little bit of clutter living with two artists in their home. But this time they've spruced up, they've cleaned up, things are in their place. They've even replaced some of the furniture. Like there's just a couple of new uh, lounge chairs in the in the living area. Uh, the kitchen looks more spruced up and like they've replaced uh, the sink. <laughs> uh, there's curtains on more of the windows. So you, yeah, you are now in this space with your parents after so much time. Wow. That's a lot of change for the two of you. I've, I've only been away about four or five years this time, and it looks like you've redone so much of this space. 
I this wasn't for me, right? No. Right. Uh, I uh, your mother, I um, she's just chuckles. <laughs> Honey, of course it was for you. <laughs> oh, this is too much. You know, this, I <laughs> black is no longer my favorite color. You didn't have to match this to what you thought my favorite color was going to be. Like it's uh is this... over on the kitchen island um doing a dry rub on a small targ. And he points over to the living area and says, show her, show her over there, show her what we did. Oh, and no. Item is like, come on, come on, come on. <sighs> she takes you over to the living area, which as you notice, yes, has been completely decked out with um, not only new furniture, but also they've taken these like, these um, tapestries and gotten them like shampooed. They're, these are tapestries that have been in your family for centuries and they've gotten them like clean shampooed and renovated so now you can see the beautiful etchings on them which are your family's history like pictures of the adventures of your ancestors and their space at the bottom for the current living people to fill in their adventures wow mama these are beautiful you know, <sighs> i figured it was time you know um, we you know, our, our legacy is wrapped up in the opera house, but that's not what wow. your legacy is. So I wanted to make sure that we include you in the family history. Yeah. And she points at the bottom and you notice for the first time that the line has continued. The line of history of, of etchings of pictures. And so you see, uh, after your grandparents, you see your parents and their opera house. They finally filled that in that, that didn't exist before. A um, picture of their opera house and your mother on stage performing and your father sitting on the side on a stool with a, a pen and parchment. And then next to that is the of the bridge of the Borku or what they imagine it to be. They had an artist commission, the bridge of a Klingon Defense Force ship with you sitting in the center chair. And then above that, as if kind of like one of those 80s pictures where like the main picture and then ah oh, that picture in the corner above that in the corner is the full little etching of the ship itself as if seen from <laughs> <laughs> oh i i can't believe you were listening all those times that i sent you all those recordings of everything that was going on i thought you guys were too busy to to have seen all this. We're busy. Wow. We like to keep up on our on our child. You know, I'm sorry that I've been away for so long and and honestly I couldn't tell you what I was doing for so many years, but I can finally be open about it now and I'm captaining a ship. Mama, Dada, I don't know. I don't know what I've, I don't know what I'm doing sometimes. Hmm. Well, I honestly don't know what to say because I have no experience with captaining anything. I mean, I've been I've been the lead in many operas, but never the captain of ship. <laughs> <sighs> it's it's new to me. I mean, Give me a knife and I'll skin a man two ways, but trying to tell people what to do and be in charge, it's, it's pretty scary. You hear a knock, knock at the door. Sharp, quick raps. Um, and Item looks over at Eschner, sees that his hands are busy with the targ, and she says, we here, we have a surprise for you. She goes over to the door, opens it, and when she opens it, you see someone you haven't seen in many years. Stately looking woman, adorned with the finest of Klingon garments and jewelries. Older lady, long black, curly, curly, black, black hair down to her waist. And she looks over at you and says, my darling, a doll. Oh. 
Lady Anod! Oh, I run over and I grasp her hand and I, I, I kiss it all the way up her shoulder as I usually do. And I kneel and I hold her hand up to my forehead at the very end. Lady Anod! Oh, it's so my, wonderful to see you again. My wonder, little, wonderful little benefactress. <laughs> I've never said that word out loud before. <laughs> it is so good to see you, child. You are no longer a child. <laughs> oh, Look at you. Mama, Dada. Oh, Lady Anod, yes. Well, I want to hear all about your adventures in space. Tell me, what are you doing out there in the vast void? <sighs> uh, I have so many stories to tell you. I, there's so much to tell you about everything that's been going on. I slit a Herogen's throat from, from ear to ear with this dick talk right here. It's, you would be so proud of me. It's just like that, 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 that manipulation that you taught me where you take the thumb and you rub it around the other side of a blade. Yes, yes, I still remember all the things that you taught me. Oh, good girl. Oh. And Eschner, his ears perk up when you say Herogen. He says, what's that? A what? No, don't, don't put this into your stories again, Dada. This, this, you can't put every single thing that I tell you into a play. It's not, you cannot put it on stage. I just, I'm just saying, I'm running out of alien species to put in our Klingon operas. What is this Herogen? Maybe I could put them in? Hmm? Uh. Okay. Never mind. Never mind. It's fine. I just want to sit down and enjoy your company and not feel like you're trying to mine me for ideas again, Dada. You're always taking the stories that I tell you and trying to make something bigger out of them. Just enjoy me for me. Uh, um, uh, Lady Anod has now sat at the counter and, and looked over at Eshner and she says, yes, dear, why don't you let, let her be? Let's let her just be and enjoy this time back with family. We don't, we don't want him mining you for ideas either, but I will say he did write an opera about the Borku. Dada? And Eschner is caught just, I hadn't told her that, Lady Anod. I'm, I'm glad that you have now told her. I feel like I can't tell you anything. You know, I'm fine. I am fine. I'm a grown woman when I'm out there in space, but somehow when I come back to Konos, it's something makes me feel like I turn into a teenager again when I'm back here. And Lady Anod, I'm just happy that you're here and you can tell my parents to relax a little bit. I'm no longer your tiny little baby girl. I'm a grown baby girl. Grown! Ah! Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I, oh, I'm just gonna go sit in my room for a little bit. Iram, Iram comes up to you and says, "We've taken good care of it. It's still there. Enjoy. Yes, go rest. We'll we'll call you to dinner." Uh, yeah, I'm just gonna go and look at my room and surround myself in my old things and remember this is why I never come back home. Okay. Yeah, you head over to the back of the loft. And since it's a loft, uh, you have to cross this big open space of the rest of the apartment, but you finally do come to your door and you enter. And tell us, can you tell us a little bit about what's there, what's in your, your childhood room? Mm -hmm. It's very small. <laughs> uh, it is like in the loft area where they built, like it's almost like a hanging closet thing where you climb up a ladder to get inside. And inside it's pretty small, but it's almost like a little clubhouse where there is going to be a, a slab on the ground uh, that's pretty hard. Uh, and there's also going to be little pictures on the wall that are just different uh, prints from the operas that my parents have been in and I've drawn all over them as a child. Uh, and then in the very corner, you see a, a little stuffed cat that uh, one of their old uh, actors had given to me when I was a child, um, a human who was passing through, and I kind of kept it all the time. 
uh, and it's stuffed in the corner there. Uh, and mm -hmm. I had named it Perface per the recommendation of a person who gave it to me. Uh, and it's small and it's cramped and I barely fit, but I just kind of squeeze my body into this almost like coffin size room and just lay down and just sigh. You hear a scraping at the door of small little feet and nails scratching low on the door. I scratch back. <laughs> and you hear it. <laughs> and then from the kitchen, you hear your mother say, oh, we got a lizard dog. And then we're going to cut away from that scene. And Ramyan, you, um, you had left with the professor, Professor Vish to go to the Klingon High Council and you make your way over um, across the old quarter to the Great Hall. The Great Hall is historical. It's a historical building in Konosh and in the first city and you take in its, um, its ornate yet, uh, uh, it's, it's visceral and strong beauty. It's ornate in the way that military buildings can be. So it's not, there's not flourishes per se, but there's these long flags that go from the top floor down to the bottom. That's just really impressive that you can hang a flag like that on either side of the front of the hall. Um, and you see that the front doors, the large, large front doors are wide open, which means that the high council is, um, it's probably in session at this time of day. And also it is a, a session that's open to the public. Otherwise the doors would be closed. Tell me Vish, have there been any major changes to the members of the high council? Anyone left the high council or gotten promoted in terms of the houses? Uh, there's quite a few new members, and I think they will all be here in attendance. Um, just some people have died um, while out conquesting or out traveling in battle. Uh, and he starts to tell you the names of some of the new members and who who are the major players. So, of course, uh, the chancellor himself will probably be here, very likely Chancellor Martok. Um, there's also scrolling, scrolling. There's also, uh, there is a new house that has, uh, it was an ancient house, but it has recently, more recently become more prominent and even gained, some say suspicious, not suspiciously, uh, surprisingly gained a seat on the council. Uh, it's the house of Antek. Uh, the representative from the house is named Druk. And so he will likely be here. We have Ra'al of the House of Kempek. She has been on the council for quite some time, uh, but she is, has been a very prominent voice lately. And Maktl, Maktl from the House of Degoth uh, has also been very... Those, those have been the main players on the High Council. Everyone else kind of falls in line behind what those three and Martok say. And he says this as you're approaching the front doors. The lay of the land has indeed changed since I graduated, even in following the Dominion War. Mm -hmm. Yes. Let us find out what these houses are up to. Yes. And so you walk through, cross the threshold of the Great Hall, and your, your senses are pleasantly assaulted with the grandness of this main open chamber. In the center of uh, and down, half a level is the floor of the chamber where the high council are seated around and in the center of that is where people stand up and give their address to the council and up above to the gallery on the main floor and on the right side and on the left side is of course the gallery where many people are seated i would say it's about two-thirds full on either side and you can uh there's definitely seating for you to find close to the front 
It is good to be here in person instead of waiting for news communications to reach the furthest reaches of space. Oh, I will say in all my time attending these high council meetings, it is still very exciting <laughs> to see it all happen in the moment. And he, I wonder uh, if we shall see a dual challenge today. Oh, that would be something. <laughs> and he guides you over to a, a front row seat so you can just peer right down into the gallery. And uh, as you're walking in and sitting, you start to pick up hearing what the, the ends of the last topic. Uh, and it's some other, uh, someone who wasn't on the list of his top players just kind of finishing up an argument. And that is why I think House Koval should be allowed to stay in our original house. And that, and then silence, and the rest of the council looks at each other like, okay. Chance Martok says, and now that we have had that, once again, thank you every day. You have told us that we are well aware, and we have no issue with that. Next item on the agenda. And Druk from the House of Antek stands up. And Druk is kind of a, uh, for a Klingon, a uh, tall, withery type, um, kind of like, for some reason, Abraham Lincoln comes to mind, um, just in terms of like very tall, six, four, five, but also like lanky for a Klingon. But definitely there's some long muscles underneath the armor. Um, you also see that Antek has kind of like, <laughs> like a, a long, you know, parted in the middle, but long, like straight, slightly wavy hair to about just at the shoulder. It's a look, it's a look, as we used to say in 2019, a look. And Antek starts to speak. Uh, Druk of the House of Antek starts to speak. As we all know, the deserters of 2364, Koris, Konmel and Kunivas, now deceased. They were vocal in their distaste with the empire's lack of a warrior spirit and spoke up against this council and the Klingons becoming more like the Federation Pitaks. Of course, that's not what I would call the Federation. There are still some believers though of those three famous deserters who, if not convinced otherwise, these believers will find ways to undermine and op openly oppose the High Council if we do not show them that we are warriors. Therefore I, Druk, son of Antek, of the House of Antek, propose that the High Council Show these people that we are warriors. I propose we send a fleet of Klingon defense force into a region known as the Qatar system and conquer that space as our own. And you hear some light cheering throughout the crowd as if maybe there's some other House of Antic in the audience here to support this proposal. And you hear some thumping, that rhythmic Klingon thumping some people are, are doing in support. Uh, Martok says, okay, all right, all right. More opinions. Who else has thoughts about this matter? And Mak Maktl of the House of Degath stands up. Uh, Maktl says, there are several planetary systems with the M-class planets in that region. And I personally have traveled out to that region before, and I can say it is very conquerable. And, and Druk looks over at him and kind of nods. Yeah. Um, another, uh, one of the other main players, Ra'al, the house of Kempek, um, this woman stands up and she says, I do think that with some caution, and with a coordinated strategy, targeting the most powerful of those planets first, 
we could take them off guard and seize power of the region. And then more cheers. And even some of the high council members seem to be getting into it. Um, they look over at Martok. Martok um, doesn't seem convinced. Yes, Oak. You all say that this is a good plan to go in and take over this Cathar system. But to what purpose? We have done well. We have fought in wars. We have won. We have made alliances with the Federation Petox, as you, or I guess not you, but others might call them. I do not see why we should put ourselves in a position of invading other places if it is not necessary. Why? Tell me. Give me a good reason why. And Antak says, my family has been known to be warriors and leaders. And yes, we were gone for some time, but we are back now. And during our time, during our heyday, this is what Klingons did. If we do not do what Klingons do, then we are no longer Klingons and we do not have the right to say that we are our, an, our ancestors' ancestors, our descendants' ancestors. We do not have the right. And more cheering and rhythmic pounding from the gallery. And uh, so now the high council kind of all mutter to themselves and just kind of, uh, there's a, a bit of a breath here now and Martok is still pondering. I uh, whisper over to Vish, asking, um, has Martok always been this hesitant to continue to expand the empire? They seem to have a lot of support here, as it were. Perhaps their own plants, but support nonetheless. It seems unlike a general to shy away from the next war especially one that is so easily conquerable, mm -hmm. unless it isn't so easily conquerable? Well, that is a good question. Martok has been a bit more cautious as of late. I think he has uh, come into his own as a chancellor and garnered power, but he's afraid of making any moves that would uh, put the Klingon empire in a delicate situation. Going to war could potentially do that. But I believe you are correct. There's a lot of support here. He may not be able to hold back the tides of war for too long. If the will of the Klingons and the will of the High Council push to war and Martok still opposes it, he may find his own chancellorship at risk. It is ironic that Gowron, a politician, was ready to enter to war. Conflict with the Federation, conflict with the Dominion, and Martok, a general, does not leap at the opportunity to fight. Are there many houses, do you think, that oppose expanding the Empire? I do not long for war, but at the same time, the Klingon Empire must continue to expand or else their aggressions will stop being pointed outward and being, and they will repoint them at whoever gets in their way, even within the Empire. Astute as always, Ra'amyan, and I am in agreement with you. We'll see if Martok makes good decision. Uh, the muttering on the floor kind of comes, uh, dies down with Martok shouting, all right, all right, everyone quiet. We'll take a vote. All those in favor of conquering the Cathar system, say I, and then just a chorus of, I, 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 from the council. 
All those opposed, nay. Silence. <laughs> Uh, you see some, there's just like maybe two council members who didn't say aye, but they're, they're not saying nay. Martok looks around. Who was the one who said nay? No one said nay, but there oh, were- Oh, no one said nay. Yeah, no one said nay, but there were a couple that were kind of silent <laughs> on it. Um, you notice actually that Ra'al is one of the ones who didn't say aye, but also did not say nay. That was the woman who spoke um, in favor of, or support a supporting argument of this. Um, Martok looks around at the High Council and says, well, then it is decided. We will conquer the Cathar system. In our next meeting of the High Council, we will assemble a Klingon Defense Force team and strategize our counseling. Oh, strategize our conquering. We are adjourned for the day. And everyone gets up, shuffles. Uh, some people, some of the high, high council members stay, members stay there and talk to each other. Martok hangs out and, and talks to some people. Some people are leaving. Some people from the gallery are emptying out. Um, I tell Vish, I wish to learn more. I will approach this Ra'al. Anything I should know before I do? Well, I don't know Ra'al personally. I have never met her or spoken to her directly, but she she tends to see both sides of most arguments. And uh, she is a shrewd politician because she, you can tell that even though she may not agree with something, she will go along to get along, as they say. So I approach her. Okay, so uh, you head down. There are some uh, kind of like gentle, not a spiral, but a gentle bending stair to get down to the floor of the council, high council. And Ra'al is uh, talking to a colleague on the high council. And in a, you know, there's probably like a lull in their conversation and that person kind of drifts away and she looks over at you. Ra'al, is uh i forget did i describe her it's <laughs> a lot you of mentioned, you mentioned her house oh i just said her house i didn't describe her physically um but al has uh dark uh a dark red curly bob to her ears um she has dark green eyes as well she has brown skin chocolate brown skin and she is uh she's like uh, curvaceous, like imagine Megan the Stallion, like as a Klingon. That's her with a red bob wig. This is that's Ra'al. So, uh, savage. <laughs> right, she is a savage. Uh, Ra'al looks at you and says, "Which can I help you?" Honored Councilor Ra'al, my name is Ra'amyan, son of Dash of House Kevek. I noticed you had spoke quite wise words on the council floor there regarding our upcoming campaign in a new system. I must ask though, because I have noticed you gave them a strategy for winning this war quickly so that it is no war, but a mere routine conquering. Yet when it came time to decide, you did not say a word either way. It is odd that you'd hand them the plans, but not take the glory in being on the side that's said to take them over. It is most curious, and I am most curious. Is that an accusation or an observation, Ra'amyan? I want you to know, honored counselor, but I, too, am someone who wishes to understand the battlefield before charging in there. Mm. Death is glorious, but victory is more glorious. How I understand it is that you understand that same principle. But that being said, it is surprising that even with that plan of victory in hand, 
You held your tongue when it came time to select and vote. It is not an accusation, but perhaps an opportunity to learn what wisdom lies beneath, especially one who is a granddaughter of a former chancellor. You know your history. I'm gonna have you uh, make a roll to, just to see how you're affecting her and, and if she opens up to you or how this goes. So probably presence command. Cool. Um, cool. Difficulty. I do think she has a bit of a guard up. So I'll say a difficulty two. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna do a quick momentum check. We probably lost one over the scene. Yeah. Did we also lose one over Jade's scene? I don't think there was any to lose. Oh wait, how many did you have? We had two at the oh. end of before the break. Are they all yeah. gone? Yeah. All right. Um, in that case, I will use my focus and cling on politics. Lovely. Um, do I have anything else? No, nothing. Nothing here that makes. Yep. Let's just roll. Difficulty two, you said. Difficulty two. And you know what? Should this be an opposed roll? Try and seduce her. <laughs> it's not going to be an opposed roll. Uh, this is just to see how this first step goes. So go ahead. Um, I have three successes with uh, a two to get my Klingon politics on and the mm -hmm. 11. Lovely. Okay. So bank those two momentum, those two extra. Or uh, one extra. Difficulty two. Oh, so I'm sorry. Yeah. Difficulty two. So one extra. So yes, you... Uh, you notice that she is at first a bit on guard because she's like, who is this person? They were watching me very closely. <laughs> um, should I be wary? And there's something about the way you speak um, very carefully, but also very confidently to her. And, and you're very observant that she decides, okay, it's all right. Uh, you, you said your name was Ra'amyan. Uh, what is your position in life? You I am... Warrior. I am currently a warrior. I was, currently. Trained, I was trained at the academy itself in the first city to be a Gintach. And perhaps I shall find my path back to a Gintach one day. But for now, I am a lieutenant of the IKS Borku of the house Quebec. oh okay uh you know what let's do our first reputation roll to see if that impresses her or not all right this is going to be another learning moment because we've never done this before in this game so basically uh the idea of the reputation roll is you're going to see if this person what their um what kind of weight your house has with this person? Is it impressive? Or do they look down on you? All right, reputation roll. There it is, 131 in the core book. All you people who got core books, you're gonna get to read this too. One thirty one. One thirty one. Okay. Oh, wait. Let's see here. Um, oh, I think you... Oh, this is how you get your reputation. So what is your reputation from... Because we did figure out reputation last time, right? I don't remember, but yes. <laughs> yeah, okay. You you didn't get shame, because I remember you you had a bad- You had a re-roll. Yeah, you got a re-roll. So you probably have the same reputation that you started with, which was three. Yes. Right, okay. All right, I'm gonna just take a, make a GM quick decision, because I can't find what I'm looking for in the court book real quick. Um, we're gonna, I'm just, I'm going to give you the option to, what's your command? Command score? Five. Yeah. 
Oh, so that's higher anyway. I think there is a mechanic in here where you can swap your house's reputation for one of your, I guess, disciplines. But your command is higher anyway, so never mind. All right, I'm going to look into that for next time. Um, I'm going to have you do another roll just to, again, uh, I want to see how, how, if you can crack through any defenses here and get some, what kind of, what kind of response you get from Ra'al. Uh, this is going to be an opposed roll, difficulty two. And yeah, you can do your presence command again. Uh, what is this to do again? To just crack those defenses? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. All right, I have various to focuses. Most, to get the click most honest pol- answer. Go ahead, sorry. Click on politics, composure, and persuasion are all focuses. Uh, do any of those apply? Oh, yeah. Uh, okay. I would say, yeah. Uh, po- you said politics, persuasion, and what was the other one? Composure. Composure. Yeah, maybe persuasion. Cool. Yeah. Um, okay. Presence command. I'm also going to use one momentum to get a third roll. All right. The third die. Great. Three total. All right. She got. She got one success, so you got that. And also bank your your extra momentum. Was it a difficulty of two? Difficulty of two, yeah. Okay. Um, so because you won that opposed role, you can now ask her, ask her something, and she's going to answer very honestly. Everyone seems so eager to take on this new system to expand the empire. And expanding the empire is routine for the Klingons. But there must be a reason why this is not an automatically wise move. What are the potential liabilities and drawbacks of expanding the empire here? There must be a reason you did not throw your full support at it. She looks around. And we can take this in a more shrouded corner, if you wish. Yes, I do wish that. Uh, And she leads you over to a quieter corner of the council. Um, Actually, she takes you up, back up the stairs to the the chamber. The chamber is now empty out mostly, and she takes you to a little quiet corner up there. So she's away from the rest of the council. There are reasons, and to be honest, you seem like someone who notices things more than others. There are people on the council who should not be leading any charge because they have ill-gotten gains. I can't prove it, but I will, and I plan to, and therefore, I cannot vote and abide by a conquest campaign that is brought forward by someone who is dishonest. Mere routine dishonor? Or, I look around. Are you aware of the fate of General Cargan? Yes, I've heard. I've heard of your Captain Bemir's taking him down. I've heard of him being exposed and working with the Romulans. Are we speaking of a dishonor at that level? Hmm. Well, if you would... I don't know if there are Romulans or other species involved in this, but as far as I know... It's Klingons. Klingons, being dishonorable to other Klingons. Hmm. 
Unfortunately, such has been the way for many, many years. I believe your own ancestor, Chancellor Kempek, learned that the hard way. Yes. I do not plan to make the same mistakes. Though I serve my ship and I serve my house, I also serve the Empire. If publicly the Empire goes to war, I shall not resist it. If it is the Chancellor Martok's decision to go to war, hesitant as he may be, I shall not oppose it. But if this is a folly that will lead to the rotten corruption, the Klingon Empire, I shall not allow that either. And I want you to know that I am a resource for you. And I hope that that trust and honor shall be returned. That is not an obligation, of course. You're a high council member. It is merely a request. I am open to remaining in touch with you. If we can build trust, then I could use an ally. Um, I, uh, I sent her some contact info. <laughs> <laughs> Very well. An honor. An honor, Counselor. I believe I must attend to my elderly professor. Kapla! Kapla! Okay. And you turn around and you see Vish. Um, you kind of left him on the floor of the High Council. <laughs> uh, but he went down there to follow you. And then he, you know, he got up tied up in his own conversations, but you see him just kind of cresting over the, at the top of the stairs very slowly and like, oh, looks over at you. Uh, and with that, we're gonna go over to Omek and Dua. You have gotten your targ, you brought it back to Omek's home. And actually, let's let's pick up with you arriving at home and coming through the door with the targ. Ma, ma, oh my yes, I'm here. We got some fresh targ here. We just need you to chop it up. We're gonna we're gonna start putting it on the grill. Oh, wonderful, good? wonderful! Put it up. Put it on my my table, my butchering table. It's right there for you, ma. I'm, I'm actually gonna go and um. I'm gonna uh, take care of this wound. I got I got a little stab in the thigh. I'm gonna just go and suture myself up real quick. It's not, nothing. Mommy, oh, I got a wound. Mom, come on. Mom. You know this happened time and time again. You know I'm um, I'm I'm just gonna I'm just gonna take care of this real quick. Uh, you hear maybe... a toilet. You hear a toilet flush, and she like comes bustling out. Where Where is your wound? Did you wash your hands, Ma? Ma, I'm fine. I'm okay, Ma. It's okay, Ma. I I love you. I'm okay. All right. It's the targ. Your is son okay. fought bravely and with great honor. The targ didn't stand a chance. This is Dua. They have never hunted before, and I have taken them hunting. I have hunted them. small game, but nothing like a targ. I feel like I should clarify that I have hunted before, just yes. not. You're, you're right. What what I meant to say was that she made the kill. Oh, isn't that amazing? <laughs> Look at that. That is very wonderful. Good job, Dua. Thank With you. With a teacher like my son, I'm not surprised. He was uh, incredibly informative, and I appreciated. Um, I appreciated the uh, tutelage of your son. He um, struck quite the figure. Well, I appreciate that. Um, hey, I'm glad that I could be be there with 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 you guys and, and just you know be a part of something that uh, is a memory etched in your brain. I know I won't forget it. 
So certainly, I must also suture some wounds. I'm afraid that Tara got a couple of pieces of me as well. Yeah, no. you, may, you may need some uh, some alcohol too, because Ma, she put some dirt in her wound. They she was that that was gonna um, Ma. They put uh, dirt in their wound, and um, I was I was telling her not to do it. I was telling her I was like, you're gonna get an infection, so uh, you may need to help 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 them. I will be uh, all right. It's good cling on mud. Mara goes over to a cabinet nearby and takes out a bottle of uh, some type of distilled liquor and just hands it over. The best medicine. Uh, and they like kind of, you know, uncork it and take a big swig of it out of the bottle first and then just dump a bunch of it on their leg. <laughs> and like, like give that, you know, oh, that stings kind of grimace, but at the same time it's like, they're just so delighted by all of this, you know, there's a, there's a, um, and then like after, you know, kind of that little display, they kind of look over at, at Mara and they go, uh, sorry if I'm, I'm using more than, it, it tastes delicious and feels like it's doing its job. Let me get a swig of that to walk. Ooh. Just help yourself. There's plenty. There's plenty where that came from. Is this the uh, 1999 vintage? Yes, it this is. Not, you know. It's very old. <laughs> and you just poured it all over your wounds? Well, oh, wait, wait. Um, no, you know what? I, I put something else in that bottle. I finished that bottle a long time ago. Ma. Yeah, you recycle. Okay, this is like beyond recycling. This is like, come on, we there's so many bottles out there in the world. Like, come on, this is really misleading. Got me thinking it tasted oh, good oh. regardless of the year printed on the bottle, and like I said, fairly certain it's doing the job it's supposed to do. Oh, good. trust me, when it comes to blood wine or any type of liquor, I I have no preference whatsoever. I'm, I'm just saying. I'm, Oh, Mecca, listen to your friend. They are very wise. Uh, thanks. <laughs> Mara goes over to the kitchen to start butchering the targ. Don't suppose um, you have anything in need of maintenance, suppose? Are you, are you talking to me or I, mom? I, I'm talking to your mother. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, because uh, they're they, they they suddenly feel very awkward about the fact that they're just in your this home <laughs> about to impose for a meal like that kind of you know oh, I'm a guest in somebody's house maybe I offered to do something oh yeah ma ma she uh, Dwa, Dwa they they're a, they're an engineer so if you you know I know you're having problems with the with the fridge and with uh you know with the with the walk in fridge so I don't know if you want to. I'm happy to take a look at anything that might be of uh, might be busted up. I yes. So out in the shed, uh, uh, Omek knows this. I do have a, a deep freezer for because I'm one person. I don't always have guests over, and when I butcher things, I need to save them somewhere. So yes, I have a freezer out back that I haven't been able to use because it isn't working. So if you'd like to take a look at it, please do. I'd be more than happy to. <clears throat> uh, if you'll excuse me. And they kind of duck outside. Okay. She's a, um, they, they are, uh, they are a mysterious one. Ma, I, uh, I'm trying to connect, uh, with them. Um, she, she knows, they, they know more than they're willing to tell, I guess. I, I still trying to crack that nut, if you may. If mm. that makes sense. Well, we all have our secrets and things that we don't want to share. So, yes. I mean, I'm. I don't think she has any. I don't. They. They. They are. Uh, not secretive. They're just not willing to share as much as I'm willing to share. So I think if, we'll just see, we'll see. 
We'll see. Maybe in time you can gain more of their trust. Seems like they're pretty, I mean, they're here in our I home. Mean, what more do you want, Ma? I mean, I never ask anyone to go hunting with me, ever, ever, ever. I know. It sounds like you've made a friend. I'm very proud of you. Thanks, Ma. Appreciate that. <laughs> Chopping this bad boy up or what? Yes. Uh, and she starts to take some knives and stuff out. And then let's cut over to the shed. Yeah. Wa, heading over to the shed. Yeah, I'm going to take a look at this thing, see if I can't fix it. All right, cool. Let's um, let's make a little extended task to fix, fix this deep thing on oh, deep Oh, man. <laughs> yes, I never get extended tasks. This is a day of firsts for me. Yeah, first targ hunt, first extended task. Um, I haven't actually run an extended task as a GM, so. Uh, and how are we on time? So we'll, yeah, we'll see. Just a quickie. Yeah, I won't, we won't make it too extended. How about that? How about that? Cool. Okay. Extended. Just figured I'd give give them a chance to, you know. Get, get a little greasy. Yeah, I love it. They're an engineer. They like to fix things. Yeah. Because there's so much in their life they can't fix. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> well, uh, as we're looking for the extended task info, um, I want to narrate. Uh, you walking into the shed, you check out this freezer, and it's old that's the that's probably literally why it stopped working because it's just old there's more parts in it that need to be replaced than seemed worth it at the time to whoever last looked at it but um pairing a computer these motherboards shot might as well just get a whole new computer <laughs> right but i mean it's up to you if you want to to still fix it you are starfleet not starfleet oh my goodness you are a klingon engineer you are capable Nothing like those big talks in Starfleet. Exactly. I'm willing to rub mud into a wound. Definitely nothing like a big talk in Starfleet. Those big talks got nothing on you. No, they don't. I could kick. Well, no, there are a couple of them that could probably give me a run for my money. I'm, I'm looking at you, McCrell. I'm looking at you. <laughs> okay. Almost got it up. Actually, with my stats, I'm fairly certain that pretty much the entire Starfleet crew could kick my ass. <laughs> wow. <laughs> even even Olin has a higher daring security than I do as a Klingon. Wow. Yeah. Looking, looking forward to that Tech V Dewa fight. Oh, wow. Oh, you got mud on your face, huh? <laughs> oh, man. Oh, Xander. Let's do an engineering off. It'll be fun. You'll win, but it'll be fun. <laughs> okay. Now I'm looking at two books. Um, go ahead and uh, discuss amongst yourselves while I look this up, please. Yeah, we love that research. I would say so, if, the, if the refrigerant in the uh, refrigerator is, you know, it's the, out of the date. Coolant? Yeah, the coolant, if it's you know, not um, environment friendly, and you have to replace it. Then, are you really doing first scientist? talk? Ugh. I don't oh, know. Yeah. I, I, mean, I might need the science boy. It's a twenty fourth century. I don't think we're using Freon, especially oh, on the Klingon yeah, homeworld. The science <laughs> boy. They really have like a really interesting way of doing like refrigeration on a planet that is essentially comprised of a bunch of volcanoes. You know. I I am curious, do your parents also have a second freezer? Because my parents got a second <laughs> freezer and it's filled with meat. Like anytime there's a sale on meat, my mom buys it and it goes in the deep freezer. Yeah. We had a Just deep freezer have. when I was a kid that was also, yes, full of meat. Just the meat freezer. I have started this in my in my non-separate freezer, but because of just COVID and cooking, uh, I've just been like, Oh, I will buy meat when it's cheap, when it falls below a certain price threshold. 
buy a bunch of it as much as they'll allow me to and as much as I can actually carry from my car. Um, and yeah, I'll portion it out and f- into flat packs so that it freezes faster and thaws faster and then freeze it. And every so often I make, I make a withdrawal of burger. Yeah. Or I, tried to, of I tried to burger. tell my parents it's like the stock market, like dealing in meat and the, de- and the freezer is, you know, buy low, eat high, just <laughs> got to deal in meats. <laughs> My mom has a, a deep freezer and also a drawer dedicated to plastic bags. You know what I mean? So if you need to take that meat away and go somewhere, she got she got she got a plastic bag for you to put it in. You know what I, mean? I, I maintained a strategic plastic bag reserve for many years uh, that has only recently been like whittling down because they banned plastic bags in, in California, like the the cheap thin kind. But yeah. for like a decade plus that was my trash bag that was my like cheap lunch bag my loud ass cheap lunch bag Um, my my bathroom uh trash that's what that's what i use mine for oh yeah okay all right i've made a decision because i realized that extended tasks are not actually in the Klingon court book i early extended tasks i don't yeah they they don't do the regular court book so instead we're just gonna kind of like engineer our own extended task pun intended and i'm just gonna have you do three rolls um you need to get six successes okay i will let you do a pre-roll to assess the damage and hopefully gain you some momentum because we have barely had any momentum this whole time so go ahead we have Three? We have three. Oh. Zero, zero. Back to zero because oh, yeah, we had one changing of my scene. Yeah. Lots of, lots of new scenes here. No problem, no problem. So <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and use my investigation focus first. Wonderful. To, uh, I also have troubleshooting as well. So mm-hmm. let's see how we do on this first roll. Woohoo, let's go. Ooh. Uh, and this is control, <laughs> control engineering, correct? Yeah. So that's a crit on one of the die because I have a focus. So that's two successes. Nice. So you got two momentum from that. That was difficulty zero. And so, yeah, you're looking at this freezer and looking at the inner workings of it and realizing, yes, it is very old, but yes, it's also fixable. Um, You look around and you also see that there are some tools in the room for you to use. Cool. All right. Pick up the whole, like that moment when somebody picks up a wrench, kind of flips it in their hand and catches it and just like, you know, mm-hmm. their face is caked in mud and blood and they just kind of look at the, the deep freeze and go, all right, let's do this. This is a fight they feel like they can win. <laughs> <laughs> the difficulty for all of these roles is going to be difficulty one. It just takes time, I, I think. Okay, cool. So all right, one. roll number one. We're going to say this is over the course of several hours, probably. (laughs) Would you say my focus of systems maintenance works for this? Yeah, I would say so. Cool. This is a system. Oh, I rolled a complication, but I got a success. Oh, okay. So you broke off a part that is so old that you're not even sure where to go to replace it. (sighs) Cool. All right. I'm going to go ahead and... Buy a momentum for a third die. Okay. All right. Oh, oh wait, it's my human bone die. There we go. Into the oh geez. Um, but you, but oh. sorry, go ahead. You can use in the uh, in the future of this extended task. You can also, if you gain some momentum, you can spend it to remove that complication to fix it. Things like that. Right. So I got three successes on that next roll. Nice. So you're halfway. Halfway to fixing this bad boy. Did I say five or six? I needed six successes. So I have four. I oh, great. currently have four successes. More than half. Um, yes. Uh, okay. Going to buy the, I think I have one. I have a couple of momentum to spend. So I'm going to go ahead and see. Because I had one success on that. So I only, I didn't have momentum to spend from that. But I did get, um, cool, whatever. I had a success, two successes from. Yes, you had two right. from your investigation roll. And I spent one of them, so I have three momentum right now, which means I could buy four die if I wanted to. Hmm. I'm going to leave some momentum for other people to use. I know we're almost, but you never know what might come up. 
Ooh, ooh. That is one, two, three, four successes on that last one. All right. So what's your grand total of successes? That's eight successes All right. total. Eight plus two. Um, great. So you um, uh, spend one of those momentum. Did you already spend a momentum? I haven't to spend a, a, a momentum to remove complication, but I will do that now. All right. Great. I think so you're usually supposed to do it at the time, but maybe I'm wrong about that. Anyways. Well, remember, this is not even in this book. So we're <laughs> kind of improvising because uh, that's what we do. So, yeah, let's say it, it took like four hours and um, you probably even did have to like come back to this. Like you went in for for the meal that Mara made and then came back out to this. But you do by the end of the night get this freezer repaired. All right. And they come back in and they're kind of like, like kind of just rubbing the grease into their hands more than wiping it off at this point. Cause you know, you don't have a towel or anything. Um, the freezer should work now. Oh, oh that's great. Thank you very much for the meal. It was delicious. And for the hunt, it was incredibly enjoyable. And I would, Really like to do it again sometime. Of course. You, you've never had targ served that way, right? You know why? Because the adrenal gland, you see, the adrenaline wasn't rushing through the animal's body. Well, actually it was because we had complications. With it, I'm but, fairly certain that that's not, the way we'll Klingon some... prefer it anyway, so. I mean, if you like gave me funky targ, then yeah, but you know. Is there any other kind? This is true. But yes, I figured helping to repair something was the least I could do to repay you for uh, what would have otherwise been a dreary and uh, uneventful day. You don't have to repay me for anything, okay? At all. I'm just glad that, sh that, that they went on a hunt with me. I appreciate that. Um, Mara uh, has been sitting here this whole time kind of sleepily because she's had a lot of blood wine. And she says, you know, you young people, uh, you aren't, I don't know how long you're in the first city for, but you should go out. You should go explore and see things. There's some really great music happening at the bazaar at night these days. You're already I sick of me, Ma. you already kicking me out. You haven't seen me for how many years? You already oh. want me to get into your house? Okay. If I were still young, I would be right there with you. You're right. You're right. What do you say, Dua? Music. Blood um, wings on me. Sure. I will never refuse free blood wine. That's right. Leave your Darsek at home. Let's go. And with that, Mara sees you off out into the night to carouse. Um, uh, on your way there, I'm going to give you the option to get in touch with your fellow crew members bef before we do the last scene of the night, uh, if you'd like to uh, communicate with anyone. Commander Ramyan? Is this comms yes. working? Yeah. Omek, what's up? Hey, uh, so uh me and Dua, we're gonna we're gonna go grab uh some drinks. We're actually going uh in the middle of town. Um we already had we're, dinner on our way right now. I don't know if you wanted to we join. We are apparently going to listen to music. Yeah. Oh uh yes. Yes, I need I need so I need something something to stop me from thinking too much thinking is happening i want first to not think me. tonight first round's on me commander oh. as i have me. much to think about and much to drink about It'd be good to see your faces do we know if uh Kot kotar is also joining us or is he still Last time I heard, he was pawn firing it up. So I think we should probably leave him. Don't alone. contact him. Oh. You don't want to. It's not. It's not pretty. 
Uh, I am uh, going to take your word for it. Okay. Uh, so you all meet up um, at the open air bazaar in the first city. And uh, during the daytime, it's kind of like a farmer's market. Um, there's lots of different stalls and stands, clothing and jewelry and armor and uh, weapons, Re little restaurants, kind of like the farmer's market at the Grove, um, little restaurants that have crammed in and bars and things. And at night, it's mostly just the restaurants that are open and maybe a couple of different stands that have like um, cool little trinkets and things like that. Uh, so you arrive at the open air market, um, you smell some delicious things cooking. Uh, there's some fusion foods happening. Um, and so like- What type of food does Klingon fuse with? I'm curious about this. Yeah, so there's this one chef who is known for doing Klingon fusion and uh, he has a standalone restaurant which is nearby, but also in the market, he has like a, a pop-up stand. And he has his, um, either he's there himself or he has his like sous chefs go and, and man the market. So he, and it's a combination of things. It could be like gach French fries, like human gach, Ferengi gach, Vulcan gach fusion. So it's basically Klingon dash other species of their culture fusion. That's very cool. Uh, would you like to check out one of these? What, uh, this, Fusion stand. So uh, I thought they I, were I, very full from eating uh, all that targ, but hell yeah. <laughs> Sorry, right. I didn't mean to interrupt. Jade, go ahead. No, I'm following my nose over to a stall that has what looks like uh, targ cracklins. Yes. Is that like, Ooh, yes. yes. I want some of that. That sounds really, really good. Right. And I, I'm sure like walking over, I've, I've already heard a little bit about this hunt and kind of poked at some of the wounds that they encountered. So I, I also have a taste for some targ now too. So I'm going to get some deep fried targ skin. You would have been proud. I rubbed mud in it. <gasps> oh, I'm so happy. Can I poke it again? Sure. Yeah. I hope it leaves a nice scar. Mm. Yeah. It's a good sign when the blood gushes out like that, you know it's good and fresh and it's coming out clean. So I'll be doing this intermittently throughout the night. So it's good. Yeah. You easily procure your your cracklings and check out Dua's um, wounds. Uh, Ra'amian and Omek, what, what are you doing? If it was Tog that harmed my crew members, it is Tog that I'll take revenge on <laughs> by eating it. You say this is in a vinegar sauce. <laughs> this, so you've taken blood wine You've allowed mm -hmm. it to sit out to get sourer instead of mm -hmm. that sweet blood taste, then have converted it into a sour dip for tog. Hmm. And then you put this small human federation, human earth bulb in it. Fascinating. I shall try. Yes, a garlic bulb. Garlic. Garlic. Yes. Garlic. What to say? Garlic. Garlic. It sounds like a Klingon word. Mm. Eat it. Warrior's herb. And Is it pungent? One whole garlic, and then one like one whole garlic bulb uh, that was been sitting in the vinegar, and then one whole piece too, like one whole piece of targ. Mm. Mm. It's good, and we also smoke the targ first. Smoke. Mm. Yes. I this think Omek also hard. knows how to smoke targ. Mm -hmm. I think he's smoking all the time, Omek. Yes, but this targ has a... There's like a party going on in my mouth. It's amazing. I it's don't... pungent. I like it. Mm -hmm. You, mm -hmm. The ends of this targ are burnt. You have burnt the ends of this targ, and you still wish to sell it to me? It's on um, purpose. It's fusion. Yes. Mm -hmm. Regions. Cajun Can I slam some, some Darsex on the thing and give me a sample of each and an extra of the garlic. Hands it over to you. And I just start palming it. 
Uh, Omic, are you also chowing down on this same? Yes. Um, it is said that this garlic has antioxidants. It has... It's good for the blood. Yes, it helps with your circulation. I. How did I know that? I wish that? we had more of this. I've been listening to you. Yes, I wish we had more of this on the iCare Forku. Do you know where we can purchase this garlic in bulk? Well, I get it from a Ferengi trader. Mm. So they come, they come, uh, they come by twice a week with different wares, different food products from different places. Commander, maybe we can get the replicator to uh, replicate this wonderful garlic, so we can have an unlimited supply of garlic on our IK as Orku. Yes. I've. I've tried it on the ship. It's not quite as pungent as this one here, but we can try. You know, all this food has me wanting more drink. Do you have anything stronger than blood wine? Over there, there's some Warnog at that tavern. And you see a little pop-up Is there tavern. also music at this tavern? Oh, uh, down the other aisle, there's some live music tonight. Omek, I want you to do an insight security role. Uh, the difficulty is um, the difficulty is two, and it's. I want to give you the option. You already have the option, but I'll remind you that you can pop a determination to get an auto success. Oh, before I roll. Yeah. You gotta do it before you roll. And then you still would get two die, two D20s to roll. Do you guys mind if I do that? Is this a cautious science or? Um... Determination's yours, so do yeah. what you want. And oh, okay. uh, this is not a science roll. Uh, I do believe we have at least one momentum left over, so. Okay. Do is we it okay if I mean, we have it. Is that all right? Well, what's he rolling for? We, we, yeah, mean... we only lose one one uh, momentum per scene change, so we should have at least one still left. And I rolled way over on a lot, so we have m much more than one. I just don't remember exactly how much. Probably like three. I'm just trying not to choke on this tar because I have a feeling like this tar is going to, I don't know, something's going to come. Some Coming crispy. back for vengeance. For real, dude. <laughs> so... I'm gonna I'm gonna use it and then I'm gonna I'm gonna yeah. roll these these three d20. Okay, here we go. Great. We have one that's auto success on a crit, and then so I have two successes. One was a fail, it was a fourteen, but I have a one and a two. Bruh. Oh wow! So so that's actually four successes. Well, do okay. did you use a focus? Oh yeah, that's what I'm wondering. Was there a focus involved? Oh, uh, what are your focuses? My focus is trying to unmute it. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Let me <laughs> see. Hold up. Ah, uh, my focus. I would say maybe spatial phenomena, weird things in space, hunting, xenobiology, survival, bat lift, sensors. I don't. What am I rolling for in the first? <laughs> um, I would say uh, I'm not going to tell you that yet. Um, of your focuses. Um, I think hunting or spatial phenomena, survival. hunting or survival. Yeah, it's somewhere in there. So yes, I would say you can use a focus for this. So that's four successes with your focus. Focus. I'm gonna just pick survival because I want to survive. <laughs> and also, did you use that determination? I guess it's hard to tell if you don't know what value you're supposed to be using. Uh, yes, he used it, and after, well, you'll know in a second, you'll have an idea of which value it is, because you, as you're chomping, chomping down on this targ, your hunting sense just kind of tells you that someone's watching you. And you take a quick glance around the market, and standing in front of a Batleth st stand, um, just looking over their shoulder at you, directly at you, with their body turned towards the stand, head turns towards you, you recognize a face that you literally never thought you would see again. 
and you recognize this person as Bosch, your father. And that's where we're going to end tonight's session. Bruh! <laughs> <laughs> uh thank you all thank you all for playing y'all are awesome uh thank you everyone in the chat following us um you all are awesome let me get an update from jacob the voice of god about we are at one thousand forty dollars <laughs> we're gonna have our careful guest on blood of the void yay Thank you guys. Thank you so much. You did that. Y'all did that. Thank you so much. We're also going to, we have, we have um, raised $1,040 for the seed project and they are a wonderful organization. Follow them on Twitter and uh, yes, yeah, share, you know, retweet them, help spread the word of the awesome work that they're doing. And yay, everyone. I'm, I'm super excited. Uh, thank you all for joining us tonight. We will be back in about four weeks at the end, the last Monday of April, come back here this time and slot next week for a mirror universe episode of clear skies. Good night, y'all.